enterprise IT and cloud teams face a complex set of challenges. Non-linear growth in both scale and volume of traffic on their enterprise IT networks. Increasing array of network cybersecurity threats. Shortage of skilled IT staff. The reality of these challenges is that IT and OT teams can do little more than maintaining their networks to support business operations, leaving them marginal time to develop new applications or services to grow the business, and virtually no time to do the strategic work that transforms their business. Over the past decade, enterprises have reduced the number of data centers they own and operate by taking advantage of the availability and consumption simplicity of public cloud services to move applications and workloads. This enabled enterprises to lower costs and reduce IT staff resources to manage the private data centers and business critical workloads that remained. However, the monthly bills from cloud service providers have increased dramatically as more and more enterprise workloads were shifted to the cloud. Now enterprises are reconsidering their cloud migration strategy and looking to rebalance their networks by moving some of these applications back to their own data centers for better performance, control, and management. At the same time, enterprises are looking for solutions that provide greater automation and flexibility in how they operate their networks. They want to evolve their IT and OT operations to become more efficient through the use of AI ML tools and more open to prevent vendor lock-in. So if I think about what is happening in the industry in terms of trends, why people are looking at going back into data centers is one of the biggest things is that the cloud costs have exploded for companies, right? They thought going to the cloud would save them money, but they've come to realize that the cloud bills are too high. So there's a certain amount of repatriation of uh, workloads that are happening into, uh, into the data centers. But they have gotten addicted to the way that cloud providers manage their networks, manage their systems. And the way that they are doing that is, you know, with things like Kubernetes, et cetera. So what we're done as Nokia is to try and bring that kind of principles into our data center management and infrastructure. In the last few years, what we've observed is that with the advent of AI ML workloads, with the advent of the big data analytics, there's been workloads that are driving a lot of traffic onto the data center networks. To sort of optimize it, a lot of enterprises went towards the public cloud to sort of take advantage of the whole automation framework and to kind of have those efficiencies of running it in a public cloud. But we are actually now seeing that those applications are moving back inwards, what we call as the cloud repatriation. We're seeing that some enterprises still need to maintain some of their workloads inside their premises. But in the same sense, they've now gotten also used to running those applications as they would run in their public clouds. So they're actually wanting the public cloud-like experience, but what they want it in in their premise. So the advantages of public cloud is it's omnipresent. It's available everywhere. The automation framework is so robust that you can easily bring up, bring down at your convenience. You can evolve, you can scale in, scale out, you can do whatever you want with it, and it just happens quickly. The advantage that the hyperscalers have, which enterprises don't, is they have a huge lot of people that are actually rolling this out in the background. But with enterprises, they don't have that kind of skilled manpower. They need vendors like ours to come up with a solution where they can also leverage the same benefits but not spend the same amount on manpower and skilled labor. The applications are bringing in a lot of traffic towards the IT side of things, right? These applications have an expectation that everything has to be in an automated manner, has to be very, has to be scaled in and out very easily. It shouldn't take a long time to do stuff. So, when the enterprises actually want to move, want to take the public cloud experience and move to the private cloud, they need a modern NOS. They need a NOS that is able to evolve to their changes. They need management and orchestration tools that can actually enable them to actually deliver that automation. It's a question, I think we need a NOS and an orchestration tool. And the combination which we're sort of building into our data center solution is will help eventually data center operators to deliver on the premise of public cloud experience in a private cloud.
So network operations teams thus far have essentially gone to data centers uh, th that are very cloud native, right? In the sense that they have used Kubernetes to manage their infrastructure, right? And the ability to manage a switch as a server has been a very important piece of it. Now we have that same ability in our products so that we give them the same abilities, the same constructs uh, to be able to do, you know, the infrastructure, the way that they would have done it with a cloud provider, except that they're doing it in their own ways. The important part is, it's also made it, an, it's not just on the developer side, it's also on the operation side, right? We have made it easier, it's a, it's a cloud native infrastructure, it's cloud native from the ground up. Some of the uh, conversations we've had recently with our enterprise customers is very much around, hey, we went from a black box data center model, you know, to build our data centers. They made the switch to the cloud native way of managing infrastructures, right? And that happened in the cloud. What does that mean? Well, it means that you can manage your switch just like you would manage your server. So that was what cloud guys allowed them to have. And they want to get that same kind of infrastructure now back into their data centers. That means being able to manage their infrastructure in a way that is Kubernetes friendly, cloud native friendly. Again, going back to the point I made, manage a switch just like you manage a server. So from our recent conversations with enterprise customers, we believe two aspects of our solution really stood out for them. One was this ability that we have a concept which is the NDK, which enables our enterprise customers to write apps and write, solve. A lot of the times, and by the way, this is one of the feedback that we had from our customers as well. Um, data center vendors used to take a lot of times to build solutions for their particular specific problems. Um, they would take years and years because features were taking a long amount of time. Now with our NDK solution, we are enabling them to write, if you have a very small problem, where you write a small app for it, and it's treated in our solution as if it's a native app, gives them the flexibility to solve some of the little problems very easily. The second aspect which, I've, which we've heard from our customers is about this digital twin, because the moment they see the true state of the network on that management and orchestration tool, it gives them confidence that the state which they, which they intended for the network is actually the state in which the network is running. And there are no, there are no deviations. And if they, even if there are deviations, the tools highlight them and they, they can take corrective actions to get it back to the intended state. The Nokia data center solution inherently consists of three systems. is the silicon, software, and systems. The Silicon, we've leveraged our experience in delivering high quality, stable hardware for our service provider partners, and we've used the same experience into delivering data center solutions. We've built a modern NOS in terms of our software, which is built ground up. It, it, is, autom it is agile, it can evolve, it has the NDK, it, and it leverages the protocol stack that we built for our service providers, so you're ready to go with all of the interoperability that we've built and gained from the last 20 years. And the last piece is, and the last and I believe the most important piece is the systems piece, which is the automation, the digital twin, which is part of our FSS solution, truly delivers on the promise of automation for data center networks. So when we embarked on building a data center solution, we looked at what are the principles that they use to build it. We basically picked up those very same principles of cloud native, which is you know, keeping the, the infrastructure cloud native, keeping the infrastructure uh, very much simple to manage, manage switch like a server. You know, those constructs is what we took and we embedded it as day one from the ground up as the system that is, that is, uh, that is the nuggets that we use to start to build the system. So from the ground up, this is a cloud native infrastructure. Not only did we build our switches and our operating system that way, we also built a management plane that 
in, takes the same constructs as you would manage it in an Azure or in a Google or in an Amazon and use those very same methodologies to bring it down into the data centers that enterprises can manage themselves.